Hey guys, I've been talking about Quain LED and PWM LED dimming for a few years now, and a few years back I created Quain LED for two separate reasons. I wanted a readily available, affordable Wi-Fi Domotica controllable LED dimmer, and I wanted an LED dimmer which didn't dim at 100 or 200 Hz PWM, but at at least 1000 Hz PWM. And although that's worked fine over the years, how much PWM frequency do you actually need if you want to use a PWM dimmed LED while recording videos or actually as a video light? Let's find out, shall we? First, let's do a quick refresher. What is PWM? PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation, and it's a form of dimming a digital, or basically on-off, LED light. What PWM does is it pulses the light at a certain duty cycle a few times a second, and those times a second is what we're going to find out today what we need. And by doing so, and varying this duty cycle, it can vary the light output a human eye sees, because a human eye, or even a camera sensor, if the frequency is high enough, will basically average the light of the pulses it sees per second, and show you a dimmed light. Now, if you do this too slow, which a lot of commercial dimmers do in my opinion, this flickering becomes visible. And often it's visible to, the, to a camera, but if it becomes visible to the human eye, this is very irritating and annoying. For this reason, my OG, original Quinn LED modules, dimmed at a frequency of 1000 Hz. Now anything above 2, 3, 400 is impossible for a human to see, but 1000 Hz is totally impossible. But camera sensors can still pick it up, so that meant Quinn LED OG was not suitable for video lighting. One of the main design features for the new Quinn LED boards is fixing this problem. And actually, in uh, one or two videos back, I did a review of a 3D printer, and I had set up this 3D printer in my kitchen. And I accidentally left the kitchen stove lights on during one of the shots. And well, as you can see, it's obvi obviously visible. And well, it doesn't look that nice on video. Another example is this new light we bought. And this one actually flickers our PWMs at such a low frequency that I was able to perceive it in real life. Especially when you move your hand in front of those LED lights that are dimmed at a too low frequency, you get a sort of motion strobe effect and, well, you'll see it in real life. And, well, it's very irritating. I really don't understand why they release commercial dimmers with frequencies of like 100 hertz or 120 hertz, but they do, even expensive lights. So as I was saying, uh, one of the goals for the new Quinality modules is that I'll be able to use them as video lights for shooting video. So I've been testing my, uh, my prototype boards and I've actually been able to get the PWM frequency at 300,000 hertz or 300 kilohertz. That's orders of magnitude higher than uh, commercial dimmers often use, or even Quinn LED OG. I've set up one of my Quinn LED DECA prototype boards, which has 10 channels, to 10 different PWM frequencies. So let's have a look at how high a frequency we need and what the effect looks like on video. First off, let's start with a PWM dimming frequency of one hertz. That basically means that the light will flicker on and off each second. The amount of time it stays on or off during that second depends on the duty cycle set. To film this correctly, the duty cycle was set to about 25% for most tests. Well, that flickering is really annoying. Let's take a look at the next test, which has the frequency set to 15 Hz. As you can see, this still flickers a lot and is quite annoying.
Moving on, we have 30 Hz. The flickering is still clearly visible, talking to you console players here. At 30 Hz, or frames per second, you won't be able to see every frame individually, but you will definitely see the difference if you look at a higher frame rate. The next test is at 60 Hz. Now the camera is also set to 60 Hz, or 1 60th uh, shutter time. Because of this, we see no flickering on the camera. In real life though, this is still very annoying and tough to look at. Much too low to see a calm and stable light. Now it's set to 120 Hz. This is getting there, again the camera doesn't really register it because it matches its shutter speed, but in real life the speed is ok and a lot of commercial dimmers will use something around this value. Still, moving objects and other things are going to show annoying effects, so too low in my opinion. Now we're at 200 Hz. You can clearly see the black bars walking over the screen. This is because of how the sensor works and it perceives the PWM flickering. Okay, and now we're at 1000 Hz. This is the same frequency as Queen LED OG uses. And with the current camera settings, this is starting to be enough, but you can still clearly see a pattern. Let's see what a higher setting does. Okay we've immediately jumped up to 40,000 Hz or 40 kHz. Very nice. Basically, this has become completely invisible for the camera at normal settings, and I won't even bore you with higher settings or higher frequencies. Let's change the camera first. Okay, we're back at 1000 Hz, but now the camera is set to ISO 3200, with an aperture of 5 and a shutter speed of 800. Now we can clearly see the PWM pattern again at 1000 Hz. Let's see what 40,000 Hz looks like with these settings. Forty thousand is already a lot better with these settings, but it doesn't seem quite enough. Let's raise it even higher. One hundred fifty thousand hertz or one hundred fifty kilohertz. We're getting close. This is a very high frequency, impossible for any human to see, and also almost for any camera setting. Let's go higher because we can. Captain, three hundred kilohertz has been achieved. She can't take any more. Well, actually, she could if you really wanted to, but it comes with some disadvantages. The more you increase the frequency the lower the amount of levels that you can set become. So while at 40,000 Hz you have 4096 levels, at 300 kHz you're down to 255. Still, depending on how important you find smooth fading, that can be fine or not. Okay, well, that's it. Testing done. I think these tests were 100% successful, and this proves that, especially with the very, very high PWM frequency, Queen LED is very suitable to use with video lighting. And, well, that makes the whole solution a lot more versatile. That's also it for this video. My latest prototypes, and it's actually revision 4, this is a revision 2, uh, are in the postage from China, and I hope they arrive soon. When they do and they test out OK, I hope I can finally release all the information and in the new website about the dimmers, and you guys can... Order one, build one, if you want. Questions and comments are always welcome down below. And also, check out the link in the description for the new Discord server. If you like the channel, 
come over and hang out with us. And uh, yeah, see you there or otherwise in the next video. Bye-bye.